asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. Divide and conquer, black and white. The paradigm we exist in where the deep state, the state, the hidden hand, the agenda, whatever you want to call it, is moving people into a permanent state of seeing things in terms of black and white or right versus left. None. It's not. There's no better illustration of that than when it comes to migration. I've been speaking to friends of mine about this today here in the city and also on the phone. So let's jump straight in then with that story you heard Rebecca Foster talk about a couple of minutes ago. The US Supreme Court has ruled in favour of Donald Trump's administration and the proposed travel ban targeting people from several Muslim-majority countries. Lower courts, as you might remember, had said to the President that the ban was unconstitutional, but the big court, the Supreme Court, reversed that decision in a 5-4 ruling announced today. Nine Supreme Court justices. 5-4 ruling. Now, the ban basically prohibits most people from places like Syria, Somalia, Libya, Iran and Yemen from entering the United States. The court's reversal is viewed as a victory for Trump and his administration. And of course, he's been tweeting with great glee and gusto since the announcement. But the travel ban has been widely criticised by refugee and human rights groups. So Chief Justice John Roberts wrote the opinion for the Conservative majority saying the travel ban was squarely within the scope of presidential authority. He also rejected arguments, did the Chief Justice, that it was based on the fact that the targeted countries were mostly Muslim. And I'm going to quote him now. He said, The proclamation is expressly premised on legitimate purposes, preventing entry of nationals who cannot be adequately vetted and inducing other nations to improve their practices. The text says nothing about religion. That's Chief Justice John Roberts there. Sky News Washington correspondent is a man called Mark Austin. Here's his report summing up that decision and what it means for Donald Trump and his supporters. It's a very big victory and one he is already um, celebrating. He's already been on Twitter saying Supreme Court upholds Trump travel ban. Wow. Um, He tried to impose the ban very early on in his administration on seven uh, mainly Muslim uh, countries, but there was immediate outrage and protests. And in the end, um, there were legal challenges, too, from from many federal courts around the United States. But uh, the Trump administration has come back with various different versions of the same uh, legislation. And eventually it's gone to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court has deemed it uh, well within uh, the presidential powers um, to carry out. It was close. It was 5-4 along political lines, which represents the kind of political division uh, within the Supreme Court, but the White House has issued a statement uh, saying that this ruling is almost a, is also a moment of profound vindication following months of hysterical commentary from the media and Democrat politicians who refuse to do what it takes to secure our border and our country. So coming as it does after a week in which uh, Donald Trump has um, had setbacks in trying to impose a much tougher immigration policy down on the border with Mexico, he will no doubt in the coming hours um, be delighted about this and will clearly uh, say so and will make the point about uh, a stronger immigration policy. As I say, the Supreme Court judges um, were split on this. The Chief Justice, John Roberts, who was writing for the Conservative majority uh, on the Supreme Court, said the proclamation is squarely within the scope of presidential authority. But one of the dissenting judges, Sonia Sotomayor, said it was eroding the fundamental principles of religious tolerance in the United States. And she went on to liken it to a Supreme Court decision allowing Japanese internment 
uh, during the Second World War. And I've been saying for many years, the right and the left are two sides of the same coin. That's why I prefaced that story by saying the paradigm has been created by the hidden hand, the agenda, the Illuminati, whatever name you want to give them this week. It has, it has succeeded largely because it has forced people into left versus right, but seeing the world, seeing everything in terms of black and white. Now, Cartoon Drunk has tweeted me. He, meaning Trump, has mainly banned Muslims only from countries that were on the hit list of the project for the new American century of imperialist conquest. Yes, this is the essence of it. So while you'll have the Alex Joneses of the world and his eager beaver fluffer Paul Joseph Watson and the Milo Yiannopoulos and the Katie Hopkins and all these people saying, yes, brilliant, the president is tough and he's promising to protect us. None of them are prepared to talk about the fact that the very deep state and the very swamp that Trump said he would eliminate, that he would destroy, that deep state, that swamp is responsible for the fact that millions of migrants are moving out of the Middle East and into Europe and elsewhere. Because it is, because it is their covert activity, their funding, arming and training of lunatic jihadists that has led the situation in the world to be where it is today. So that's what is wrong with the alt-right. This is seeing things in terms of black and white. While they're cheering Trump for keeping us safe and by locking out the bastard Muslims, they're not looking at what Trump is doing to continue the policies of his predecessor and his predecessor's predecessor and so on, so on, so on, which is to destabilise that region, do what Israel wants, which has laid the ground for the Greater Israel Project, cause absolute chaos and kill and displace millions of people by funding the madmen. So the alternative right don't want to look at that. Just blame the Muslims. The left is just as bad. Two sides of the same coin. Ah, oh, he's a bastard. Ah, oh, ah, oh, this is inhumane. This is terrible. This is wrong. This is not what we should be doing. We should be looking after these people. Yes, but equally, why are these people being forced out of their homes in the Middle East and North Africa at the same time? Why? This is what they don't want to look at. And this is why we're fucked, ladies and gentlemen. We are fucked. And the independent media and the Richie Allen show is worthless. We're not going to make any dent in this mentality. Because it's growing and growing and growing. Exponentially. People are, are, are rushing to this. For their answers, the old right or the left. It's like taking a step forward and 15 step backwards. Steps backwards even. That's how crazy things are. Trump is great, he's protecting the borders. Yeah, but Trump and his pals, his Zionist neocon pals like the madman John Bolton and many others, they're responsible for the project for the new American century targeting of the countries that were mentioned in the uh, in the in the ban right crazy stuff this isn't it but while genuine independent media and there isn't much of it you can count on one hand real journalists in this if you want to call it arena are going beyond the lunacy the fallacy of right versus left Muslims versus Christians Black versus white, while we're being marginalised, and I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes, by Google and other internet providers, the clowns like Tommy Robinson and Paul Joseph Watson and Laura Loomer, not Laura Loomer, that, I, I can't remember the girl's name, Katie Hopkins, these people are being promoted at a rate of knots. This is the lunacy of it. Yeah, let's move on, shall we? That was Trump. Now, the Duke of Cambridge, otherwise known as Prince William, has described the sight of shoes left behind by Jews killed in a Nazi extermination camp as terrifying. So this goon saw a pair of shoes 
at a memorial in Jerusalem and he said it was terrifying. Look at that, William, look. There's a pair of shoes that was belong, that belonged to somebody who was interned. Jesus Christ, a pair of shoes. So he visited Yad Vashem, which is the World Holocaust Remembrance Centre in Jerusalem, and he told reporters, well, that he was just trying to comprehend the scale of the Holocaust. The princes in Israel on the first official trip there by a UK royal, day three of five, he's been to Jordan and apparently he will visit the Palestinian territories. Well, the whole country is Palestinian territory, but we won't get into that. He met survivors of the Holocaust as well. And it's good to see the UK media today at least airing some opposition to his visit. Here's Gada Karmi, the Palestinian doctor, and she's an academic at Exeter University. She's been on this show, by the way, as well. She was on Sky News today. Gada Karmi on why she's opposed to the visit and why it's inappropriate. Uh, no, I really don't agree. This is a highly inappropriate visit and much to be regretted because uh, Israel has been engaged in killing Palestinian men, women and children, unarmed Palestinians since March the 30th. It has been internationally condemned for these actions. So what kind of a message does Prince William's visit give to the Israelis who are engaged in this kind of behavior? Violations of human rights, violations of international law, which are no, not a secret. What is the message that the Prince's visit gives? It gives the message that we, Britain, approve of this behavior. We wish to pay Israel a compliment for its behavior. We are actually rewarding it for its recurrent violations of international law and of Palestinian human rights. No, this is not the message that the royal family should be engaged in, and nor should the British government force Prince William to be undertaking a job like this. I must tell you, I have every sympathy with him. Okay. Having to sit and consort with ministers in the current Israeli government whose behavior and whose attitudes are openly racist. I okay, mean, it's not a secret. Openly racist is right. God, a car is there. Now, Rosa Friedman of Reading University strongly disagrees with that. Of course, it's a grave travesty that human rights violations occur in the occupied territories. And indeed, it's a great travesty that the occupation itself exists in the first place. The royal family has visited very many countries which are occupiers, for example, China, countries that commit grave human rights violations, such as Saudi Arabia, even countries which, as uh, my colleague said, are openly racist, like Australia. This isn't a reason not to visit a country. We engage with our allies. We engage with our non-allies. We seek to build new bridges and new alliances. That's what the UK has always been about. And this visit to Israel is setting out that there will be bridges made, both with the Israelis and with the Palestinians in the occupied territories. And this is important within the world stage. Australia? Openly racist? Really? It's news to me that. How can you define an entire country as openly racist? Well, you can when you're dealing with governments, but you can't when you're talking about the population. Like, it's wrong to say that Israel is openly racist. The government is. Zionism is a racist creed, but a lot of Israelis are not racist at all. And given the opportunity to make things right with the Palestinians they are occupying, I'm sure many Israelis would. It's interesting, she said it's a tragedy, it's a tragedy. It's not a tragedy, it's genocide. That's what's happened to the Palestinians. Shame that the Sky News presenter wouldn't ask her, what would you do then? Because the only thing to do is to delegitimize these regimes by refusing to do business with them and by sanctioning them back to the Stone Age. That's right. Let's give the last word to Gada Karmi, Palestinian doctor and academic. It's the British government desperate in, 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 in the context of Brexit, desperate to please the Americans, desperate for their approval, decides that the best way to the heart of the United States goes through Israel. And that's actually what this visit is about. It's something that should not have taken place. And really, if Britain is engaged in trying to have a moral role in the world, this is not the way to do it. You do not send out signet signs of approval of a regime, of a, of a government like the Israeli government, 
and at this particular time you do not do it using the royal family. What you do is you apply the same set of standards to Israel as you did to South Africa and you say, and Zimbabwe, you say we're not going to tolerate it. No more business for you. We're going to cut you off. We're going to impose incredibly difficult economic sanctions on you and eventually the Israeli people will get pissed off and they will fuck the Netanyahu government and all the other Zionist lunatics out into the street. That's how it works or how it should work if we lived in anything other than the lunatic asylum we live in today. Loads of tweets on that. Uh, keep them coming in. It's at Richie Allen Show. Patrick tweets, I agree with you about no substantial difference between right and left thinking and policies and that is part of the reason why political parties have to be abolished and a new political system in the UK to start with based on what I call pure democracy. Introduced, says Patrick, by 2027. You see, Patrick, I have the utmost respect for your opinion, my friend, and that isn't to patronise you at all, but you lost me when you said new political system. Let's not have any political systems at all. That's what I would say, but thanks very much for the comment anyway. Mawinga tweets, this particular visit couldn't have come at a better time for Sarah Netanyahu and her charges. That's right, the the um, Israeli authorities are bringing charges against Netanyahu's wife over expenses and money fiddling that she is alleged to have overseen claiming for things in the presidential residence fraudulently. I suggested last week rather Maybe a bit cheeky because I don't know for a fact, but Netanyahu is such a scumbag. To me, because his own, because his own um, character and his own finances and his own business dealings are the subject of scrutiny by the Israeli authorities as well, it wouldn't surprise me if the nutty one is trying to get his wife to take the fall for his uh, nefarious activities. That's what I would say. David Stanford says, Well, Richie, Australia doesn't hold an open house. Goddamn racists. How dare they not want their infrastructure stretched to breaking point. It's just selfish and racist. Don't they realise we are stronger together, says David. Thank you, David. Yes, of course, that is why people like Rosa Friedland would label Australia as racist because they've got a very, very strict immigration policy in that particular country. Hi to Bob Stew, uh, who's listening to the programme. Uh, hi to Rob Allen as well. Rob says, there's an irony. The more people wake up, the more they will suppress or attempt to suppress. Hi to Lance Burkett, who's listening to the show as well this evening. Glad to have so many in a heat wave. It's a verifiable heat wave. And of course, when you get weather like this, you expect a drop off in your live listening figures. But it seems that it's uh, very healthy this evening. Thanks for staying with me. Now, you might want to hear a bit of hysterical virtue signalling. It's not a chart countdown. I've not got enough for a countdown. Might have a countdown tomorrow or next week. But um, back to Donald Trump, there was a marvellous bit of hysterical fish whiffery in the House of Commons today. Now, Bojo the Clown, or Boris Johnson, the Foreign Secretary, is back in the UK. He had been in Afghanistan and he's being roundly ridiculed for not being there, excuse me, not being in the House of Commons yesterday for a vote on the third runway at Heathrow, plans for a third runway. He's always been against it, and he said he'd lie down in front of bulldozers to stop it, but yesterday he was in Afghanistan and not here for a vote. The MPs voted overwhelmingly to push through the plans for a third runway. So after all the ridiculing and the mickey-taking that he had to put up with, his opposite number, Shadow Foreign Secretary Emily Thornberry, who doesn't want Donald Trump to come here in a couple of weeks' time, outlined why the uh, the President of the United States shouldn't be here at all. Emily Thornberry, fishwife, virtue signalling, this is great. But even he knows, surely in the depths of his soul, 
that when we have a president like Donald Trump, who bans Muslims and supports Nazis, who stokes conflict and fuels climate change, who abuses women and cages children, that is not a record to be admired. That is a record to be abhorred. And I simply ask the Foreign Secretary not just why he joked that a man like that should be in charge of our Brexit negotiations, but why he thinks seriously that a man like that should have the honour in shut two up, weeks' time of up. visiting Chequers, Blenheim Palace and Windsor Castle and shaking hands with Her Majesty the Queen. I order you to be quiet! <laughs> Emily Thornberry there. These people have got short memories, don't they? You know, when the Saudi royal family are here, when they're here from Bahrain, when they're here from China and other places around the world, they've got short memories. People like Thornbury. Right, 25 past the hour. Christine Hart joins me in a minute. I just wanted to mention this because I mentioned this at the very beginning of the programme. The attack. Now, I've done a lot. I've, I've offered. I've put out a lot of criticism to mythomaniac fake journalists in the independent media who are always crying about the fact that they're being attacked for what they are doing for humanity. I've named so many of these people before. I'm not going to do it again today. It's not about them. But don't think I've turned into a hypocrite. I haven't. I'm not important. I never was and I never will be. That isn't modesty. It's a fact. Platforms are important. People who do research and who put themselves out there to find things out are important. But the independent media, the platform itself, or platforms like this, are coming under serious attack. You know by now that over a year ago, YouTube demonetized not only this program, but other programs and other channels as well. And you know that back in February, this uh, program's YouTube channel with 80,000 subscribers and 20 million views was deleted for no good reason. Whitney Webb writes in Mint Press News today, listen to this, for much of the year, independent media has felt the sting of increased social media censorship as the revolving door between US intelligence agencies and social media companies has manifested in a crackdown on news that challenges official government narratives. With many notable independent news websites having shut down since then, as a result, those that remain afloat are being censored like never before, with social media traffic from Facebook and Twitter completely cut off in some cases. Among such websites, social media censorship by the most popular social networks is now widely regarded to be the worst it has ever been, a chilling reality for any who seek fact-based perspectives on major world events that differ from those to be found on well-known corporate media outlets. Last August, Mint Press reported that new Google, Google algorithms targeting fake news had quashed traffic to many independent news and advocacy sites, with uh, sites such as the American Civil Liberties Union, Democracy Now! and WikiLeaks seeing their returns from Google searches experience massive drops. The World Socialist website, one of the affected pages, reported a 67% decrease in Google returns, while Mint Press experienced an even larger decrease of 76% in Google search returns. The new algorithm targeted online publications on both sides of the political spectrum, critical of US imperialism, foreign wars and other long-standing government policies. Now less than a year later, the situation has become much more dire. Several independent media pages have reported that their social media traffic has sharply declined since March and in some cases stopped almost entirely since June began. And this is why I left Facebook. Now, a friend of mine known as Raj is running the Richie Allen Facebook page. I don't have much, if anything, to do with it at all these days. And we see that with a following of over 20,000 people on Facebook, which isn't gargantuan, but remember, when it reached 20,000 about two years ago, Facebook slowed it down. It basically stopped it gaining any more followers. So about two years ago, we got to 20,000 followers. And now it's got something like 20,200. Figure it out. So when I finish the program, my mate puts the program onto Facebook and with a following, with a 
following of over 20,000 people on Facebook, it's lucky if it gets three or four interactions. And this is what Hayden Hewitt was talking about all those years ago when I first met him. Facebook has become the internet and Twitter now as well. They're deciding who and how many people see the content that you've created, that you've put out there, and it is killing the independent media. But not the independent media. It's killing the truly independent media. And there isn't much of that. I'm talking about the independent media that doesn't fit into the alt-right, far-left paradigm, the black-and-white scenario, you know, seeing everything as, you know, I'm a Trump fan, or I'm a Bernie Sanders fan, or I'm a Corbyn fan. That bollocks is being promoted while people truly putting something different across are being marginalised. So when you say to me, the Canary and, you know, Jeremy Corbyn, you know, a far left online publication, when you say to me, Infowars and all of that, these organisations are what we call mainstream light. It's like Diet Pepsi. That's all it is. There's nothing original, nothing challenging, nothing new about the content. It's the same old bollocks. Trump is a man. Obama's a bastard. Trump is the man. Hillary's a criminal. And when you're talking about the left, you substitute the names and Trump becomes the criminal and Clinton becomes the friend of democracy and the friend of socialism, which is nonsense. This is what it is. That's being promoted and genuine alternative independent media is being suppressed. 